another one for the mechanics. This is a very simple but useful tool. It's an electric circuit tester for vehicles. Brilliant tool for the auto electrician and mechanic. I have to agree, it is a pretty too handy tool. It's very, very simple. It's written, the manual is written in very much Chinglish. It's bizarre. It, it even gives wrong instructions. It's fantastic. I'll put that out of the way and show you the tool. So this thing is very simple. It lets you connect to the car battery and then you can probe out electrical connections. Well, I'll show you. Let's uh, power it up. It's got a very long lead, but that's because it's designed to wander about all over the engine compartment and indeed to the other end of your vehicle. So I shall connect that black to the negative, red to the positive, and now, when you, I'll keep that clip out the way, when you take the cover off the tip and you touch it onto positive, if you watch the LED here, it shows that what you're connecting to is positive, or if it lights green, what you're touching is negative. So it helps with tracing things, but also, suppose for instance that you had a light which was referenced to the chassis, like many of the lights in vehicles are, that chassis if you're American, chassis if you're British or indeed uh, French, which is where the word comes from. But now, if you were wanting to trace a problem with the light uh, and you could test it locally by going onto the light or testing along the whole circuit, you can put it onto the connection and then you can choose whether the tip goes negative or positive. And as you can see, when it goes positive, it's just switching straight to that. Now, if you were to put it onto the negative connection, and then you're to switch to positive. Uh, the power supply is limited current, but what would actually happen in a vehicle with unlimited current from the battery is it would trip internal protection, and it would also sound an alarm to let you know that something had tripped. Auto reset trip. Okay, that's more or less it. I think it's time to open this up. This, incidentally, is a little portable camping type light. It's just LEDs and resistors, nothing fancy. It's a, a 12 volt light. I've never made a video about it, I don't think. Not really much to make a video about. Shall get these clips out of the way. Now you might think the red and green LED is going to be super simple. You'd think maybe you could use a resistor and an LED from the positive to the tip, and then another one from the negative to the tip. But in that instance, both the LEDs would be lit all the time when it wasn't connected to anything. It's quite clever how they do this. I'm looking forward to uh, reverse engineering to see how they actually do that. So if I pop the cover off this, thanks to Phil for the uh, screwdriver. He gave me it a while ago. It's hand machined, not available commercially. Custom machined just for me. It's quite neat how he made it. He, uh, the adapter for the end is actually a little socket and uh, he machined it down and then put it into this, the grub screw to hold it in. Quite neat, very smart, I do appreciate it, especially because it is handmade. It always makes things a bit more special, does it not? Oh, incidentally, this black lead here, if you want to test something that's actually removed from the vehicle, you can basically put this clip onto it, and it's connected directly to the negative here. So you definitely don't want this clip to touch the positive, because there is no overcurrent potential look of it. Okay, the first surprise is that this probe is actually captive here. And that it's going on to these little spingy contacts down here. I wasn't expecting that. thought it was just going to be a wire soldered onto it. I can see the beeper for the overload indication. I also see the switch here. I'm going to have to desolder that to get the circuit board out. Is there much on it anyway? There's the, there's the LED. It's a three connection LED. Are they all connected? Does that also have an indication mode for other things? There's the uh, overcurrent device. It's a PTC thermistor. A PTC thermistor is basically a 
thermistor temperature sensitive resistor that is designed to it, initially it has a low resistance so it allows current to flow through it without any problem but as soon as the current reaches a certain level it causes it to heat up and when it heats up it self heats itself and its resistance goes up uh, and it just basically goes into a high resistance state is there anything else under there there's not there's really not much in here there's a bridge rectifier there's a transistor there's some resistors and the LED. Okay, right. Tell you what, I shall pop this out. I'll take a picture of it so we can reverse engineer it. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is done. It's refreshingly simple. It's almost excitingly simple. So let's zoom in on this and we shall explore this. Now, the two circuit board sections here... This is the main component side with bridge rectifier and the buzzer on it and the uh, components here. And the side of the LED is the other side, but I've flipped this top image so that everything correlates. You know, this pad is here, this pad is here. And things worthy of note, the buzzer circuit for indicating a fault is just stunningly simple. This uh, is a 7 amp, 30 volt uh, overcurrent device. It's a PTC, positive temperature coefficient thermistor, and when it trips, it goes open circuit. When it goes open circuit, if you get the probe, say for instance you've got it switched to positive, but you put the probe on negative, so there's a dead short circuit. The high current will flow through, that will trip, but then you'll have a high voltage across it. That high voltage, well the 12 volts, gets rectified so that no matter which polarity, whether you had it switched to positive or negative, uh, it gets rectified and it goes to the buzzer. That's it. So that as long as the probe is held on and there was the short circuit and that was open circuit, then it, the buzzer will sound to show that, you know, there was a short circuit. And the protection tripped. The LED is actually an RGB LED with the six pins, kind of like a video while LED. I suppose it's just the cheapest way to do it. And their arrangement, the resistors, is quite odd. Uh, there's not really much to show in this. Let's cut straight to the schematic. And there is an anomaly. I'll let you chime in on this. Tell me what you think. So, zooming up. Here's the crocodile clips or alligator clips that go onto the uh, vehicle battery. Oh, something I should mention. One thing you shouldn't do with this probe is probe low voltage stuff like sensors that are expecting 5 volts back to the engine management system. You definitely don't want to stick 12 volts in that. I just thought I'd mention that. Be careful what you're probing. It's mainly for the sort of 12 volt side of the vehicle. Um, so here's a 12 volt rail coming in those clips. There's a little auxiliary clip, this little clip, which is designed to allow you to test things when they're out of the vehicle. Things that would normally be grounded to the chassis, or the chassis, as you might see in America. Um, so that's just connected straight to the negative. There's a switch that can toggle between off and either positive or negative for the probe. And uh, there is the PTC thermistor, 30 volt, 7 amp PTC. And the bridge rectifier and the buzzer across that, so that if that goes open circuit while you, you're probing, it will simply make this buzzer sound in either priority. It's incredibly simple. Now, the LEDs. There's a resistor bridge across from the positive to the negative. Two 1K resistors, meaning that there's going to be a current flow, probably about 5 milliamps, roughly, typically. Is that about right? Yeah, it's going to be about 6 milliamps, actually, continually flowing. But if you connect the probe to, say, for instance, the chassis, which is negative, current will flow from the positive through this resistor, through the green LED to show it's negative, and then through this resistor and this diode. That's the resistor and diodes. I get the feeling these aren't needed. Likewise, if you're to connect it to the positive, current will flow from the positive into the probe through this diode, through this resistor, through the red LED to show that you've touched the probe positive and then find its way to the negative rail via this 1K current limiting resistor. I don't think these are needed. In fact, they actually pose a slight problem. Uh, if the LEDs were just bridged in parallel, then the voltage across them can't 
the reverse voltage can't exceed the forward voltage of the other LED, so it's going to protect the other LED. It's a bit like those bipolar, bicolor LEDs with just two leads. But by adding an extra resistor here, it means that if you were to touch the probe onto something with a very high inductance, like say for instance you touched it to the starter coil, um, and uh, the starter relay, and then you click the uh, switch to energize that, but then you release the switch, you could get quite a high voltage spike in that probe. And normally that would be clamped across, the, it would go through the LEDs and their appropriate resistor. And it would result in a sudden current spike, but it should the LED would clamp that. However, if the current spike was high enough, it could create a high enough voltage across uh, these that it would pose a slight risk of overvolting the other LED with the leakage through the diode. I don't think it's a huge thing, but it just makes me think they've overcomplicated this by adding these two diodes and these two resistors. They literally could have just bridged those like that and just run them straight over there. Am I right in saying this? I think I am. I don't know why they've put those in. There must be a reason. But um, I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. But that's refreshingly simple, isn't it? There's really not much to go wrong. Um, the LED could fail. The PTC is rated to break fairly high currents. Uh, and there's a certain element of resistance in these cables that's going to limit the, the current to a sort of sensible level before it breaks it. Uh, that's nice. It's a very simple design, a very simple and functional tool that is extremely useful for diagnostics on vehicles. Nice enough case as well. That does surprise me that the... I thought there was going to be a wire soldered onto here, but instead, uh, this probe, it's kind of... Oh, you know, it's pushed in, and then it's actually clamped in place. It hits an end stop there, and then it's clamped in place by this little um, spacer here. That's quite neat. Um, and I suppose that makes sense, that they've just got these little spring-loaded gold-plated contacts that just touch up against that to make contact with it. It just keeps things simple for manufacturing. But that's it. A very neat little device, a very functional little device. It's uh, perfect for diagnosing many problems in vehicles. It's got a relatively long cable. I don't know how long the cable is. I'll, I'll just measure it. One moment, please. It has been measured. It is roughly four metres or 13 feet. So that's a good distance. It may struggle to get to the back of the vehicle. If you've got that in the battery compartment, it depends on the vehicle, the sort of length of it and the accessibility of the battery. But that is it. Uh, a nice, chunky, robust case. I like this fairly solid switch. The nice, simple LED buzzer circuitry in the protection. It's actually a really nice, well-designed device.